I think there are two major solutions that I work with. Now, there are many, so these are not uh, the only ones. One of them is what I call the power of purpose. My work has been centered on purpose for 40 years, studying uh, purpose and meaning in, in people's lives. And the uh, sort of the cliff notes or the shorthand for what purpose is, it's your reason for getting up in the morning. If you don't have a reason to get up in the morning beyond your own self-maintenance and your own self-interest, you're not as happy, you don't live as long, uh, you don't heal as, as quickly, and uh, you're not as engaged and energetic in your, in your work and, and not as productive, let's say, in, uh, in many ways. And so purpose is something that is a direct antidote or solution to when people really find that engagement and get out of that sense of isolation, it's when they're serving somebody else, when they're giving their gifts. It's not like you just have to go and volunteer at something and that'll do the trick. You have to volunteer for something that uses your gifts on things you really care about and are passionate about in environments that fit you and your, your values. When you use your gifts on things you're passionate about, you have a reason to get up in the morning. And there's something called helper's high, which has been researched. There's actually a change in the immune system, in the dopamine in the brain, for example, that happens when we start to serve other people. I learned about this in uh, uh, one of my teachers early in my uh, professional career was a man named Viktor Frankl, who wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And it changed my life and my whole point of view on this purpose and, and meaning thing. Frankel, in a nutshell, was in a Nazi, three Nazi concentration camps. He's a psychiatrist, a neurologist, very famous like Freud and Adler and Jung and many other people for his thinking on human behavior. All of a sudden, all stripped away, he's in a concentration camp. His whole family's exterminated, he's the only one, and he survived. He got out, he weighed 87 pounds, he came back, uh, to Vienna where he lived and he sat down when he healed and in nine days wrote Man's Search for Meaning, which is one of the international best-selling books out there on this kind of uh, topic. And he said this, he said that the last of the human freedoms is choice. It's to choose what you're going to do, who you're going to bring to this circumstance. And he said the people who survived the concentration camp, when they got up in the morning, they chose to give somebody else a kind word somebody else a crust of bread, somebody else a, a vision of what's possible when they, when they get out of there. That choice to get up in the morning and at least with part of your time to serve, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your church, your religious organization or your community, but to get outside of yourself, that is a huge breakthrough in, iso in, in isolation and it changes the, the, the uh, chemistry as well as the psychology or the happiness of, of, of people. So helping people make that choice is, I think, key to the whole social isolation impact area and understanding how powerful purpose is in really uh, bringing us to that, that stage of life that we want.